the welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. Hello to my YouTube friends and family. I'm so glad that y'all come back to see me. If you're new to my channel, I miss Lori. And you are in the Whippoorwill Holler Homestead Kitchen. And today we're going to be cooking. We do a lot of cooking and eating around here. And I hope you stick around for the recipe. We're going to be making what's known as no peak or forgotten uh, rice and pork chops. It's a, <laughs> this recipe has been around for a long, long time. And it was back when... You know, when using cream of mushroom soup and cream of chicken soup and all that stuff was a was a big ordeal. And it still is. A lot of people still use it. But it's a delicious recipe. You can whip it up pretty quick. You can get it in the oven and uh, not even worry about it for a good hour and 15 minutes to an hour and 30 minutes. You can go about your business and before you know it, you got some delicious supper cooked. So I've got all my ingredients right here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to brown our pork chops. We're going to season them up. We're going to brown them just a little bit. And then we're just going to mix our rice and ingredients up. And we're going to stick it in a 350 oven and uh, put a piece of foil over it and just let it cook away. And I'll go about to cleaning the house, doing laundry, and everything I've got to do. <laughs> I just got in from work and I'm going to get this in the oven because Mr. Brown's going to be hungry when he gets in from work. And if you're new to our channel, Mr. Brown is my husband, and I call him Mr. Brown just because that's what everybody at school calls him. And uh, I'm Miss Lori, and he's Mr. Brown. So, let's get busy and get this recipe put together and get it in the oven. Now, I've got four pork chops here. And this recipe, you can use up to six pork chops. You can double this recipe if you got a bigger size. This is a... A 9 by 13 baking dish. If you got a bigger baking dish, uh, you can do up to 8 or 10 pork chops and, uh, and double the, the recipe. But I've got four pretty good nice pork chops here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to season them up and we are going to brown them up first because I like to brown my pork chops and chicken and stuff like that before I put them in my casseroles. Now you can use bone-in pork chops, you can use boneless pork chops, uh, just uh, a lot of times I'll buy a whole uh, pork loin and I'll cut them in, in chops, you can use something like that. It doesn't really matter, the, the recipe will work either way. And I've got some lemon uh, pepper seasoning here, and most of the time you think, well that's, you know, we we'll use that on chicken, but I also use it on pork chops or something like this. Just gives a really good flavor. So I'm going to season it up on both sides and put just a little bit of salt. And I've got my skillet heating over here. And I've got my oven heating to 350. These are some beautiful pork chops. Danny and I try very hard to buy local meat, fresh meat. And uh, we didn't have anybody that had any pork coming off anytime soon so I don't buy meat at the grocery stores uh, anymore so I ordered these online meat is high we all know that um, these pork chops were raised in Arkansas so it is locally grown but I did order it online 
And you might can do that in your area too. Or you can just, you can buy your pork chops where you want to. I'm just letting you know how, how I do mine. And these are really pretty pork chops, like I said. Um, there it is. I was looking for my, my fork here. And I'm just going to get this in here. And kind of brown my chops up a little bit. Anytime that I'm doing any kind of a, a casserole that uh, calls for chicken or pork or some kind of beef or something. I always either brown it on both sides or kind of cook it a little. I think it just helps it with the sears and the, the, the taste real good. The seasonings and so I'm going to let these brown on each side. I'm not going to cook them all the way through. Now I've also I've got some mushrooms, and I might throw them in there and cook them just a little bit. You don't have to do that. You can just throw this in with your rice and stuff, and we'll fix and get all that mixed up here in a minute. Because, you know, this is going to be cooking for a good hour, 15 minutes to an hour and 30 minutes. So your mushrooms will be good and cooked, so you really don't have to do that. So while our pork chops are browning, we're going to get our rice mixture mixed up. I've got two cups of chicken broth here and in my bowl here I've got, now you can either use a can of cream of mushroom soup or a can of uh, cream of celery. I've got both of them in here or you can, some people make it homemade, they make it themselves. and when I've got time I do the same thing uh, but I also keep canned on hand just for for times like this when when I don't have the mixture mixed up and I've got to get something on the table. But this is a can of cream of celery and a can of cream of mushroom, 10.5 uh, ounce cans, and then two cups of our chicken broth. Some people, I've had a couple people ask me about my mixing bowl here. They want to know so bad where it come from. And this was a gift to me and I absolutely love it. But I have no idea where it come from. I mean, I know who gifted it to me, but I don't know where they got it. And I have looked and looked and looked trying to find this enamelware mixing bowl, and I just, I haven't been able to find it for anybody yet. So we got that in there, and I'm going to put, I'm not going to put no salt in here, because we know how salty cream of mushroom soup is, especially cream of chicken. I'm going to put about a... Uh, Probably a teaspoon of garlic powder. You can use uh, a teaspoon of minced garlic if you want to. In fact, I don't think that was really a good teaspoon. I'm going to put just a little bit more. You know Miss Lori likes her garlic. And I'm going to reach back here. I'm going to turn these pork chops over. because, Like I said, you don't want them to cook. You just want to brown them good. Get a good sear on both sides. This recipe, I've not done this, made this in a while, so I'm kind of excited about it. But this is the same recipe that you can do with a chicken breast too. It don't have to be done with pork chops. It's pretty much the uh, same recipe, same thing. Just made with chicken breast. I've got a cup and a half of rice here. Um, I'm not going to tell you to be particular about what rice you use. I just use whatever I've got. You can use, uh, the recipes always call for long grain. Uh, you may not have long grain on hand at the time. It always works for either for me. So, so I'm going to stir that up. And I've got a package of uh, onion soup mix here. And you know this stuff makes everything taste good. So we're going to put this in here. And I might put just a little bit of pepper. 
Like I said, I'm not going to put no salt. I just feel like it's going to be plenty soft enough. And, of course, when I get it to the table, and if I feel like it needs a little bit of salt to it, I'll just put a little bit of salt on it. I'll put about half a teaspoon or so of black pepper. So we got our soups, we've got our chicken broth, we've got our garlic powder, pepper, rice. I'm going to put, I don't think I'm going to saute these, I think I'm just going to dump them right in here. Save me that, just that much more steps I don't have to do or worry about, because like I said, they're going to cook long enough in the oven to get done. I had these mushrooms that needed to be cooked, so you don't have to put mushrooms in this. I know a lot of people don't care for mushrooms, so it's not something you have to put in here. And I'm going to turn my pork chops off. I got one that's curling up on me. And then, so I'm going to kind of cut it. So I'm gonna... There we go. Now I've got a 9 by 13 bacon dish here, and I've got it sprayed. I'm just going to pour my rice mixture in here. Oh, I can't wait for this to get done. For one reason, because I'm really hungry. Another reason, because I haven't had it in so long. And I, um, I'm just here to tell you, Miss Lori loves pork. I really do. Um, you may think it's crazy, but besides maybe a good hamburger, and Mr. Brown cooks a mean uh, steak on the grill sometimes, and we're able to have a piece of steak. But pork is my favorite meat, even over chicken. I know a lot of people are like, oh, chicken's my favorite. But pork has always been my favorite, and I think it's because I was raised on it. My grandpa was a big hog farmer. He raised a bunch of hogs, and he processed his own hogs, and he sold hogs for meat. So I guess maybe that's where I'd get it. I don't know. So that's all in there, and I'm going to bring over my pork chops that I browned on both sides. And I'm just going to kind of lay them on top, just like that. Hopefully I'll have room. These are pretty good sized pork chops. These are about an inch thick, but they'll, they'll cook. I think some people overcook the pork chops. And I've got all these good juices in here. And they're going right on top. I'm going to run over here and get my full. And I'm going to cover it up. I'm going to put it in my 350 oven. And I'm going to time it for an hour. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to look at it. I'm not going to peek at it. That's why it's called no peek rice and pork chops for at least an hour and 15 minutes now an hour and 15 minutes i'm probably going to peek at it and if i think it needs another 15 minutes we'll do it in fact i might take the pool off and just finish it off that way y'all going to hear my oven door squeak <whistles> don't you just love it reminds me of grandma's wood cook stove her oven door always squeak like that I always knew when she was putting biscuits in in the morning because I could hear the oven door squeak. I know we drive some of y'all crazy, but it's okay. Okay, we'll be back in a little bit and we'll dish it up. I think I'm going to make some sweet potatoes and something else. Maybe some field peas or something for a side dish. And then we're going to make us a peach cobbler. A very quick, easy peach cobbler. So as my side dishes, I went up a pint jar of 
some purple hole peas that I canned last year. And then I had some frozen sweet potatoes that I found in the freezer that needs to be cooked and ate. They're just, they've just been blanched and put in the freezer. And uh, I'm going to a little bit of butter and brown sugar on them. That's the way Mr. Brown likes them. Okay, let's look at them, guys. At an hour and 15 minutes, I looked at them, I peeked at them, and I took the foil off. And this is 15 minutes later, so that's an hour and 30 minutes. And look, it smells wonderful. It's done. And I can't wait to dig into this. We're fixing to make a quick peach cobbler. It's one of my favorites, too. It's one of my favorites because I just, I love it. And because it's really easy to put together. You can use store-bought canned peaches. You can use frozen peaches. You can use your own canned peaches. This is a 29 ounce. It's one pound and 13 ounces. <clears throat> and I've got a 9 by 13 uh, baking dish here. But the first thing we're going to do is i got a whole stick of butter here. I'm fixing to stick it in the oven. I'm going to let it melt. And then we're going to mix up our ingredients. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this in the oven. Let that melt. We're going to mix up very simple ingredients. And I've got a cup of self-rising flour. I've got three-fourths cup of uh, brown sugar. Now, you can use just regular white sugar. I like the brown sugar. I think it gives it a lot better, deeper flavor, taste. And then I've got a cup of milk. I'm just going to stir this up a little bit. break up some of that brown sugar I think I had left it out long enough in the cup that it drew some moisture so what happened okay we're gonna pour our milk in here one cup and that's all there is to the batter and stir it up real good Now you can double this recipe. I've doubled it before and uh, made a bigger dish. And uh, even if you don't make a bigger dish than a 9 by 13, if you double the recipe, what it does, it just makes a really thick, thick cobbler crust on it. I've done it both ways. So when our butter gets melted, we'll get it out and we'll finish our cobbler. Our butter is good and melted. Sometimes I'll even gild the lily and kind of let the butter brown a little bit. I got my batter here and I'm just going to pour my batter on top of my butter. Let's kind of go back and forth. My oven's preheating 350 and it usually takes oh anywhere from 45, 40 to 45 minutes in my oven for this to cook. Now what I do is I take my peaches <clears throat> and I just kind of lay my peaches out. Now you can use diced peaches too. I've done that. I've even took these slices and kind of cut them in half before. 
if I'd have thought about that, I'd have probably done it this time, but it's not that big a deal. It's going to be good either way. You can do this with apples. You can do this with berries, blackberries, raspberries. Cobbler works with a lot of different fruits. My favorite has always been peach. My kids really prefer apple. And I think these peaches are in a heavy syrup, but you can get a light syrup. It'll work. And you really don't even have to have this big a can of peaches. But I like a lot of fruit in my cobblers, so. Now what I'm going to do is before I pour the juice on top of this, I'm going to take just a little bit of cinnamon. And just sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on here. Or a whole lot, whichever. Now I'm going to take my juice from my peaches and uh, pour that on top. And then I'm going to put this in the oven. 40 to 45 minutes. When we come back, we'll take it out and uh, we'll try some peach cobbler while it's still good and hot. my cobblers out of the oven it took about 40 minutes on 350 we're gonna put some in a bowl and uh, maybe get us a little heavy cream to pour on top and we're gonna taste it so there is our peach cobbler with a little bit of whipped topping on top and it is delicious I hope y'all like these recipes and I hope you try them it was a really good supper wonderful cobbler y'all come back and see us in a couple days y'all have a wonderful week and uh, make you some peach cobbler it's delicious we love you guys god bless